Hello and welcome to Channels Book Club. My name is Olakunle Kasumo and it's great to be on the show. At times I'm a reporter on Channels Book Club and it's great to do that. This is the release of the books written by Professor Wale Shoyinka. One of them is right here in my hand, of Power and Freedom. This presentation is part of the Lagos Book and Art Festival. In fact, it ends the Lagos Book and Art Festival. And we've had one week of attending and reporting the Lagos Book and Art Festival. It's amazing, 24 years of running a book festival in Nigeria. That is no joke, considering all the obstacles, financial, logistical, cultural, and so on. This gentleman who run Cora, Committee of Relevant Arts, are just heroes. Together with all the other people across the country who run book fairs and book festivals, despite little or no government support. That's something that is very close to my heart. I wish the governments in Nigeria, both federal and state, will begin to look seriously at what some people in some other parts of the world call literary tourism. Hmm. Well, one week of Labav, workshops, seminars, book readings, and all manner of interesting events will be part of it. Enjoy this report. As part of efforts to ensure the consistent promotion of books and culture in Nigeria, the 24th edition of the Lagos Book and Art Festival has been held at the Freedom Park in Lagos State. with the theme Pathways to the Future had 64 hybrid sessions including colloquium, seminars, symposiums, mentorship and art exhibition among others. The annual one-week festival is organized by the Committee for Relevant Art, CORA, this year's edition was attended by students, artists, publishers, writers, poets and other literary and art enthusiasts. One of the guests of honor at the festival, Toki Mabogunje, a Nigerian lawyer, business consultant, broadcaster and poet, gave a glimpse into the books that shaped her. My very first, most favorite kind of book is autobiographies and biographies. I love autobiographies. I want to read about what other people did when they were growing up, when they lived their lives, the mistakes they made and they regret, the things they did and they succeeded at. So autobiographies are my best category. Um, immediately following that is personal development. I got to a point in my life when I had finished school, I'd started working and started worrying about, so Toki, how do you become better at what you're doing? How do you make decisions about where you want to go, who you want to relate with? How do you improve your relationship with other people that you, that you work with? Where do you need to go next in order to become a better person? So there was that about personal development. And then when I started going from law into business, then business became my third category. So understanding business, um, what, what, what should I know about business, particularly in this country, um, that would take a business forward, that it would improve businesses. And then my fourth category is a combination of things, my hobby interest. But honestly, where you have interest, you read. If you read about that thing, then you learn a lot more about those subjects. And it makes you much more of an expert. People turn to you for advice. You sound a lot more knowledgeable. You have a lot more confidence in yourself. Uh, not the kind of confidence we have these days that within two minutes, somebody's disgracing you down the line. No, you know, if the person tries it, you have an answer. So reading sort of gives you that confidence, gives you access to knowledge. Um, 
gives you deeper knowledge, makes you an expert, and then puts you in a position to innovate. Because in today's world, we keep talking about innovation. How do we make the world better? How do we make things better? What kind of things can we create that helps society in solving its problems? These things come from reading. The children were also not left out in the festival as some sessions were dedicated to them. What do they call hi, everybody? The Spring Girl. I can't hear you. The Spring Girl. Say a bit louder. The Spring Girl. Now listen, they call someone a Dose Spring Girl. She's not going to school. Grandma is sick. She's an orphan. So she's an adopted grandma. Now, Alex says that you must keep your playground clean. Your classrooms must be clean. Right? Your homes must be clean. Let's start with your home. What we're trying to do here is to improve the reading culture in Nigeria, right? So I can see that children are enthusiastic about books. I see that they all, they want lots of books. One of the things that many of them spoke about is that they didn't like reading before. There was a particular boy in my class that said he wants to be a musician and he doesn't see any reason why he has to read. But after we had like the read aloud, he was so eager to finish the book and said, from now on, I would like to read more. And so these are some of the things I know that the festival has done to a lot of children. And I know that once there's an improvement in the reading culture of a country, then education will move forward. Reading is the bedrock of education, whether we like it or not. Every educational system is, is hinged on the reading system. The quality of our readers is what will improve the quality or the outcomes of learning of children. So I, I love what the book, Lagos State Book and Art Festival is doing, LABAF. This is one culture that we need to improve now that children love gadgets and they don't want to read anymore. And so it's a festival that aims to improve it and which it has been improving it. So kudos to the authors that were here to read to children. Well done to all of them and well done to the organizers of, the, of LABAF itself. It is said that children are the future, creatives and inventors of tomorrow. But the ones with a vision as clear as a picture, see but yet unknown. Cherish and love we were meant to be. Happiness and hope we were meant to feel. Our cries and our woes sympathized with. Our days filled with knowledge and friends. But all vice versa. The name of my poem is I Love This Earth. I love the earth and everything that lives. I love the plants and the beauty each one gives. I love the animals and the fishes at sea. For I am a part of Mother Earth and Earth, she is a part of me. The second poem I'm reading is when, when a flower does not bloom. When a flower doesn't bloom, you fix the environment. In which the flower, in which the flower grows, not the flower. In which the flower grows, make it bloom, not gloom. Thank you. They were elegantly dressed in their school uniforms and traditional attires to strike a balance between education and culture. I shall be whatever I want to be. I am patient, working hard and persevering in life. I shall be whatever I want to be. If I am patient, working hard and persevering in life, I shall be whatever I want to be. If I am patient, working hard and persevering in life, I shall be whatever I want to be. This year's edition of LABAF was dedicated to Bruce Onobrak Peya, a veteran Nigerian printmaker, painter, and sculptor who recently celebrated his 90th birthday. Onobrak Peya who took the children around his displayed works at the venue of the festival, explained the concept behind each work of art. What exactly inspired you that led to you making multiple artworks? Making multiple artworks is not a thing of one day. It's um, something that started a long time ago. It started even before I entered secondary school. And um, I learned to express myself I learned to show what I see in the environment. 
I like to express the stories that are told, the folk, the folklore stories that are told. I like to draw, and so on. So it went on and on and on and on. Other lineups for the school children included poetry presentations, book review, art training and exhibition, and cultural appreciation, and many more. The tortoise and the hare is a story from Jane Stevens. One day, there was a hare who was always bragging about how fast he was. The tortoise got tired of all the hares bragging and challenged the hare to a race. The hare said, you dare challenge me to a race? The tortoise said, you will see. Soon after, the race started and the hare was out of sight. The hare turned back and said, see who challenged me to a race. See how slow he is. I may as well just take a nap. And he slept in the middle of the race. The tortoise, moving slow and steady, passed the hare and made it to the finish line. All the animals were cheering and the hare woke up and ran as fast as he could. But the tortoise had already won the race. Let's recite a poem titled, My Future Belongs to Me. My future belongs to me, my hope, my wish, having only one thing in mind, to be the hero of my time. I, as I paddle my boat, the ocean pathway to my goal, the desire to reach the peak, how glorious it is to be at the top. As I sit to think of the journey ahead, I, I struggle to reach the top without stumbling. I focus on my goal and forget my shortcomings. I know that my future belongs to me. Mingo everyone, my name is Ushuri Opi. I'm a representative of Baptist Academy for this cultural appreciation and I'm here to talk about the Urubo culture. The Urubo are located in the southern region of Nigeria. They are the major ethnic tribe in the pre and are predominantly found in the Delta states. Though they are the fifth largest ethnic group in Nigeria, they are only approximately 5 million in Nigeria and 1 million scattered across the world. The Urubo, the Urubo Kingdom can furthermore be divided into two political systems, the gentocracies, that is the government ruled by the elders, and the plutocracy, that is the government ruled by the rich and the wealthy. and I'm so grateful for the use of um, things that they feel like are not useful. But um, thank goodness to Busano Prapaya who made all these beautiful artworks. I'm so grateful to be here. Nigeria is a great country filled with beautiful cultures. If we neglect our country, we are feeling like you will see some of them saying Nigeria is poet, Nigeria is this, but it's not so. If you look at it, we are copying older countries. But we should look at ourselves and our culture. We should be proud of who we are. I am a Yoruba girl and I am proud to be a Yoruba girl. I've gotten to know more about my own money. <laughs> when we're divided into classes, we're taught about money, about other cultures. And I actually heard a lot of beautiful poems. children enjoyed their sessions, art and literary enthusiasts further feasted on the online session. 
most of our young people today are two things. One is that we must ask questions. The program chairman, LABAF and CORA director, Tony Akinoshu, explained the vision of the annual festival. Essentially, what, we, what we're doing is to have a conversation around what's going on on the planet, what's going on in Nigeria, and how texts that people have you know, published you know, speak to those issues as a way out. The books of this year's festival included Not Too Young to Run by Ogbu Eme, Cracked by Fumi Lori, The Road Never Forgets by Yemi Ogumbi, Sorosoke by Sunday Akande, Rissi the Dustbin Girl by Temilolua Adeshino, Powered by Poverty by Lawson Omokidion, Machines Like Me by Ayn Sawan, and of power and freedom by Wale Shoinka and much more. The final session of La Baf 2022 was a special showing car retrospective. The event saw the official unveiling of Nobel laureate Professor Wale Shoinka's two-volume book of essays of Power and Freedom, Volume 1 and 2, and the release of his selected poems from 1965 to 2022. This season was a collaboration between Cora Bookcraft and Alliance France Lagos. feeling very, very honored uh, to be chosen by, uh, by you, by Mr. Wallace Soinka, uh, to, to have one session of uh, the festival here. At the panel session, Professor Soinka discussed his perception of global humanism, Nigeria and world politics. Well, I will reach a stage where uh, what is happening here on this continent, in this country, and we get to that level where the human quotient is relegated to mere statistics, sort of mindless, bloodless, fleshless statistics, uh, then it's time to invoke, invoke the often neglected, uh, I don't want to even call it too, too weighty, a word like philosophy of humanism, just simple humanist, uh, sense of relationship to other human beings, as well as to the environment that we live in. For me, the captivity of those students, I don't know which is more horrifying, the, capti the capture and the enslavement of those pupils, or isolated events like the martyrdom of that girl, Deborah, in uh, what state was this? About you? Who was lynched? Not merely lynched. That was bad enough. Lynched by her fellow students. You just wonder where, where the human has gone in us. Those were more or less children who committed this killing. They were in relation to the rest of us. And the guilt, of course, is a lot adult world because a world because they have been indoctrinated. So a massive reorientation is required in order to be able to call ourselves a human community. It's all very well and right and just to remind the outer world that, listen, African lives do matter wherever they are. We have to emphasize that, to scream that even louder and more stridently and more consistently on our own soil. Because what leadership does to citizen uh, is something which one would not have imagined even in colonial days. One would have found totally unacceptable from external imperators. And so we sound hollow sometimes when uh, a Lloyd 
is brutalized when a Trump comes and uh, utters rhetoric that leads to a spate of extrajudicial police killing of blacks and so on. We lose our moral authority, our voices sound hollow, and even when we project them, we only receive a, a cynical stare, which you translate very easily, we translate very easily into, who are you to talk? Have you put your house in order yet? What about those who are butchered, you know, the other day, casually? We just have to <laughs> develop within, internally, evaluation on our own lives to have the moral stature and the moral authority to intervene when our own kind is brutalized elsewhere. He further made clarification on some misconceptions about his works. We can't idealize either sex. No, I'm dealing with human beings. And if I feel in a comical mood, I pick whatever comical figures are available and situations. That's my privilege as a writer. Nothing to do with my philosophy about relationship of men and women. I've written my works <laughs> yes. and, and, and I find myself more knowledgeable mm. about men than women. Of course. You know, and I Natural. don't pretend that I can get into the psyche Natural. of women the way women writers should be able to get exactly. in the psyche of people of their own gender. And that's the way Correct. it is in creativity, you know. The chairman, Cora Board of Trustees, Kaede Aderionku, gave the closing remarks of this edition of LABAF and hinted participants on what should be expected at the next edition. We call it uh, the Book and Us Festival. It appears to be expanding way, way, way beyond what we planned. Uh, we are now in a capsule of uh, seven days, and this is the seventh day. It is actually begging to be expanding. Expand the to the eighth day, ninth day, tenth day. And we are even having a feeling that who knows if uh, the space permits, probably the next lavaf, which will be at 20 feet, might even be longer than that. Who knows? Let's give it a future. The Lagos Book and Art Festival birthed in 1999 and has been the longest serving and consistent book and art festival in Nigeria. Pathways to the future, that's the theme of Lagos Book and Art Festival. What an incisive theme. We need to start thinking seriously about the future and start creating pathways to that envisioned future. And so the Lagos Book and Art Festival 2022 ended with the release of Professor Wale Shoenka's three new books. It's been exciting for us being part of the Lagos Book and Art Festival, being part of book fairs, book festivals generally. Remember we had the Sharjah International Book Fair just before the Lagos Book and Art Festival started. And there are quite a number of book and art festivals on the way, either ongoing right now or about to start. For example, the Arcade Book and Art Festival. You might want to start looking at your calendar every year to look to see the book festivals and book fairs going on in Nigeria and how I wish that government, federal and state, will begin to look at these book fairs and these book festivals. Like I said earlier on, I, I just keep repeating myself on that but it's very important it's time for us to tap into all the potential and all the talents that we have in nigeria well we look forward to getting your feedback through any of our social media platforms displayed on your screen my name is ola kunle kasumo remember one great book can change your life bye bye